Ladies and gentlemen, may iFinator present to you Forza Horizon and more. This is a podcast where iFinator will be answering some of the questions I've got lined up and you in the comment section can type your thoughts whilst I list my opinions about the certain topics. Here we go. First question, where have you been? Since I haven't been making videos on YouTube or BitChute, plus Mines, I've been making some content on Mines.com, having photos of cars which I like, and giving quick opinions on it, writing some articles from Article 11 slash Article 11 slash 13. Thanks for destroying the internet. To to looking at the Toyota Supra NASCAR which I g gave myself a timeline of how I would advertise the new Toyota Supra. Plus, I've been given a challenge to make a channel on Instagram, Dylan Doodle 7 get 5,000 followers, which will be easy, I guess. Plus, I got the channel on Minds.com, so if anyone wants to check that out, at Dylan Doodle 007 with no spaces. What would you buy Forza Horizon 4? Maybe. If I did buy it, it'd, it'd, I'd have to buy it around May to June. If the reviews are 85 to 100 on Metacritic or 8.5 out of 10 on any other ranking system. If I, if I get it for free, which I probably would do, I wouldn't mind having the game, but with Forza Horizon 4, I'd only be playing it for around three to four months. Maybe if it's a bit different from Forza Horizon 3, six months. The truth about the Forza Motorsport and Horizon franchise is that they produce these games like two to four years, but they always seem to feel the same. I, I know it's really tough creating a game in that amount of time space, but come on, at least, at least make the game feel slightly or more new than it already feels, if that's okay. But if, the, but if AR12's playing it and any other YouTubers, I'll consider it. If they are playing it, yeah, bonus. I'll buy the Ultimate Edition because it's much reasonably priced for me, because you've got the Drift Pack, which I'll probably be drifting. No, I, I doubt I'll be drifting or drifting for once in those because they seem to be finely tuned machines. Plus, the day one car pack, which will obviously come with it, which I cannot resist. Apparently I'll have the Aston Martin DB10, the Jaguar XC75, and many others, which are my favorite cars. I think they'll come in a future DLC list that will be available in the car pack, which is part of the Ultimate Edition, with having two expansion packs, which mm, one of them's bound to be Hot Wheels, and the other one, I do not know. I'm hoping it's football or something, car football, like Rocket League, just to annoy them. But if I did get the Ultimate Edition, I think I may go with the physical copy and then the digital copy. The physical copy, because I know it'll be the last game in the Forza franchise, to be digital or physical, because from Xbox 2, all the games will be digital. But with the physical one, it will be nice and neat. So I can just put in my Xbox. I don't. I don't have many. I don't have much gigabytes of data left to fill up, which I'll have to delete. Delete some games. Oh, poor me with a 500 gigabytes Xbox. People are much worse off than me. What's your thoughts on the car list? It's the it's kind of a blend of Force Most Book 5 to 7 plus some new cars, which is okay. I'd say it's slightly is it's good because there's some more British cars, such as the Aston Martin DB10, which I said I already love in the Jaguar XC75, which I also love from the not so good Bond movie. Which, may I add, should have had a cooler car chase in a cooler place. From, from, the, from my favourite cars, it would have to be the Aston Martin DB10 because I've had it as a Hot Wheels car, which I always play with from time to time, always look at, so no one thinks I'm insane. 
a weirdo plays with ho- with his Hot Wheels cars still. I thought it was a car guy. And then for for the car that I'm least excited for is some of the months is some of the trucks, such as the Unimog one. It's not guaranteed to be in the game, but I'd assume it would be in because of some photos. If it's in, I may check it out, but I wouldn't use it multiple times because I'm more likely to use the Volvo, Volvo Iron Truck just because it's quicker and it's very similar to the Koenigsegg one to one or it's an equivalent of one. That's a good one, that is. But I think there's some other cars in the list such as the 2019 Ford Mustang, which, eh, it's gonna be quite similar to the 2015 one, but more upgraded and has a different look. Good or bad, I think it's good for what it is. I think it'll look better over time, but what happened to the 2010 Ford Mustang with them lights? I haven't got any much, I haven't got much to say about the car list. Why have you got, why have you stopped playing the Forza franchise? One word, boring. Since Forza Horizon 2 in April, or late April, I've been thinking, uh, I've been around these same roads multiple times. I've checked everywhere I need to go. I've driven in my favorite places multiple times. And now it's just feeling rinse, re- rinse, repeat, rinse, race, repeat. I may as well not play this game anymore. So I did. I did not. I, I went outside for a month or watch YouTube. The third operating system, which isn't Linux. Later on, I thought, oh, I may as well play the game. May as well ha- have some fun and make some Forza Horizon 2 videos for the Rhyme 9 challenge. I don't know why I was thinking of that name. I really do not. But I had a fun time doing it. It was until Forza Motorsport 6, which I decided, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip this game and play some cool racing game. I am so hyped. There's more cars, the same list as Forza, I think it's like at the time, the same size as Forza Motorsport 4's car list. It's either small or bigger, it's around that size. Which thought, oh, I really love Forza, Forza Motorsport 4. Car bowling, all the cool race cars, anything fun, I was excited for. Until they announced the Top Gear crew was going. It was thanks to Jeremy Clarkson doing some shenanigans, which unfortunately got him into deep trouble. And that's why we had the Grand Tour. Good job, Amazon. You've made me proud. Then I decided two years later, I want to play another racing game. I want to play Gran Turismo Sport. I, I, I went to Insomnia in Birmingham, which was a great time. I looked at some of the racing simulators. Oh wait, I, don't th- I think there's only like one or two. Gran Turismo and Gran Turismo on VR, which I loved. R- r- racing on Brands Hatch, or the v- Brands Hatch Formula 1 track, which is not my favorite, but it's still fun. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed driving the I think it was the BMW M4 GT3 or something. Oh wait, it's the Chevrolet Corvette C7R, which may I add is a stunning racing car. It looks stunning. I did quite well in that race. I got ninth position, but I had but I had to use a racing wheel and things. If I had a racing wheel. I'd probably come first, but that was thanks to the grass. Oh, I hate grass. But then I stopped gra- playing Gran Turismo after the updates wore out. I, it was a good, it was a great Christmas present. I, I loved, I loved many of the cars in, in it, including the Toyota Supra or the new one, the new race car, the the Dodge, the Dodge Tomahawk X, which I used to drive around Blue Blue Moon Bay. A ton of times just to collect some cool credits which I can spend on cool cars and mileage mileage points to get special paint jobs and things like that so I was pleased I had a lot in Gran Turismo sport to be thankful for including some of some 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 of the photo modes I, I love the scapes it was much improved 
upon Gran Turismo 6 and all the features inside it had the I think it's abbreviation which made everything look rainbowy even though it was supposed to look more drunk the filters which I do I do love some of them and just the more technical exposure things which I never got right I should have learned Adobe Photoshop raw filter it's not the end of the world but at the moment, since I'm bored of Gran Turismo Sport, even though they've updated it with some new cars, I'm now just watching YouTube videos, writing writing articles about goodness knows what. Hopefully I may make a video on them. I think with the how to make a cool car poster, I think I'm definitely going to do that. All I've got to do is learn how to green screen or, or cut out the background for the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo X. In the, in the in the mits no not the Mitsubishi F22 Raptor in the Lockheed Martin F22 Raptor then I'll be perfectly done. What what's better, Forza or Gran Turismo? Sorry, fanboys, I love both of these games as much as each other. You're missing out on both of these games. You're missing out on the realistic features of Gran Turismo. And the more nerdy, nerdy part of it, which I love myself, such as the tuning. But but for Forza, it's much more of an intuitive experience for me. Everything's laid out simply, or is that just me? Because I know where the customization parts were. Upgrading, we've got body kits. Anything that I like in terms of customization, Forza's got you back. With with the Forza decals, it's it's one of the it's one of the best things ever. The the community is awesome. I'd say it's the best one in the video game. Sorry, Gran Turismo Sport, but, but with Gran Turismo Sport, it's got the decal thing, but you know, but it doesn't exactly measure up how big it is or X to Z, because like X to Y doesn't even measure them two, which I find really annoying. But that's life. I can't have too many good things. There's got to be some bad things for me to complain about. Which, in life, complaining is best. Why? What's better for the environment? Electric cars or petrol cars? Tough question. Okay, it's not a tough question. At the moment, for if you want an environmentally friendly car, have a car that's at least... 60 kilowatts below. You can have a car that's 60 kilowatts. That's equal to a BMW 3 Series. But, you, but, if, if, you, but if you have it higher, you, it's going to go towards an S-Class or a Rolls-Royce with the Tesla Model S, P100D. There's too much power and too much everything. It, it, should, it, it should go for that. At the moment, the problem with electric cars is the batteries last till goodness knows when, like 40,000 miles, and then, to make things even worse, you have to power it, and powering that means you need more power stations, chop some trees down for land so you can produce energy, them ugly windmills that kill birds, and everything in between. So, so with the infrastructure for electric cars, we aren't built for it. We need many decades for us to think it through. And I'm not sure if that's going to do that well. But for the next 50 years, I'd say petrol cars are king. Even though they're polluting exhaust fumes all the time. We, we, can, we can lower that down. Not with turbos, but just by pure science and research. We, we can get below, below 90 CO2 kilometers per per hour easily if we if, if if all the car manufacturers think about it you can I've got your back but there's got to be no shortcuts involved with turbos sorry Porsche I bet you're really angry at me it's not the end of the world Porsche you've got the Porsche 918 which we're all jealous about why do you have a podcast firstly it's easy to make and second of all I get to give my raw thoughts, my raw emotions, 
to the audio, not to the screen because you can't see me. But the thing with audio, but the thing with having it more cut down and having it bits edited, you're, you're not going to get the, the feeling as if you're talking to a normal person. It is nice, but I don't, but you don't want to watch CNN all the time. No one does. Do you mean fake news network? Ha. <laughs> are you pleased that there are no loot boxes and microtransactions for for, for the Forza franchise? Yes, indeed. Since since they announced it for the summer update, I think Brian Eckelberg did it. I, I was thinking, oh my goodness, this is amazing. That means with the Forza loot crates, that means there'll be no more industrialized gambling or institutionalized which is good for the children plus with the microtransactions you do make a good a b good book with it but it makes the community go sour because they don't want beginners going up in a Lamborghini or Porsche the first minute they step on they want people to grind to a certain level but I'm not very pleased with Gran Turismo Naughty Gran Turismo. You can sit on the naughty step. It's Sony's fault. It's not Kaz's fault. It's Sony's fault. Because I think in the background scene, they decided, ha ha ha, let's force Kaz to stop his microtransaction problem or we have low number sales. But the problem is with that, Gran Turismo Sport feels incomplete. I know that it's good getting updates every month, but for the no, but for the Gran Turismo, I think Gran Turismo should have been, should have had one more year or two more years if that for for it to be released. That would have been epic. Well, at least launched with the PlayStation Five, because I'm sure the graphics on that, everyone would just drop their jaws and go. Oh my gosh, this looks so cool. We have many cool cars, many cool tracks. We've got everything to have. And we've got many cool features too, which we'll all be pleased of. But I think for, for, for the Gran Turismo, I think they could have had some remasters of Gran Turismo 5, 4, 6, 3, 2 and 1. They could have had that kind of bundle all in one that would last a couple years. Maybe add, add in some new cars, which we wouldn't mind having. As a kind of show, showing where Gran Turismo will head in the future. But that, that's, what, that's what I think about the microtransaction thing. Also, I've got some notes to add on here. I, f I forgot to mention in the, the, the Forza Ver what's better versus Forza versus Gran Turismo. The, the multiplayer on Gran Turismo is superior. Forza, uh, there seems to be many cars smashing around, crashing, bashing, whatever, qu cutting corners. They've now improved that, which I'm incredibly pleased about. But going on Gran Turismo on multiplayer, the last experience I've had of it, it was great. The there were less cars crashing, I think I caught someone out, but I had to pop my pimple in the race. No normal racing drivers do that. Also, I've got to mention my friend's comic company that I co-founded with him, Capri Comics. Capri Comics is a simple, offers simple yet refreshing complex comics which you can sit back and relax because these are good quality because we stamped them. Okay, we didn't stamp them because it would would have to have a watermark which does not look good. Also, there's this thing called Article 13 slash 11 that's been going around, which I'm really annoyed about. I'm not gonna go full mad, cause that's gonna make the problem even worse. But with Article 13, it will ruin the creativity of the internet, S slow, cut down on many people's livelihoods, freedoms and jobs, and just be a nightmare for Europe. If they want to get their voices heard on the world world stage, Article Thirteen will do will do incredibly bad. 
e- even though I'm not sure what Axel Voss's intentions are, I hope they're good in terms of try- trying to get more artists paid in terms of in the in terms of the musical industry. But I would say put your music on Jay Z's music platform, pay pay for that. Do some things exclusive on Bevo.com. The the world isn't gonna get mad if you do some exclusives, but if you if you're gonna force people to 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 do certain things which the internet does not want to do, the internet will get hugely mad. Article eleven and thirteen is not the way to sort the the this, the the i the, the the thing of the internet. So so the music companies, why don't you just form your own thing with Vivo? It'll be perfectly fine. Because I think that there are other musical artists that would be really up, they'll be really distorted when they, when they see, oh, you have to pay for these certain things. Also, I haven't heard many people mentioning Article 11, which with the link tax, which I'm not sure if you have to pay a certain license with it, or if it's dot 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 pounds per month on certain sites, or if, or if you have to pay it once in a month or so. I think that will ru- ruin journalism, honest journalism, because some people wouldn't want to pay for it. So that in turn, people will be hiding their citations, which that will be good for no one. From, from a student trying to give his homework in online to journalists that work for Vox Media or anything like that, that will do some huge damage. Okay, not Vox Media, some independent website that they manage themselves. That'll be a that'll be a terrible idea. It just can't happen. But if they really want to think of something, why not just ha- have an idea of supporting everyone from the little person to the from the little person that runs their own business to the big companies for fair use. And on that bombshell with this podcast, good night.